I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Pianos. I've had quite a few inquiries about this 3D printing thing. I've put out a few videos over the last few days about the 3D printing that we're doing, and it seems like there's quite a bit of interest out there. So I thought I'd uh, elaborate a little bit more. People have asked about the CAD files and about doing that and, and everything that's entailed on that end. I've been showing the final products, but not really what is entailed in getting to that. So. Getting into a little bit more detail, here is here are some examples of the double flange that we're duplicating. So of course that's wood, it's very dirty. The piano is 1898, and so it's uh, dark and black and filthy. And you can see it's, it's broken there. That was actually like a lot of them. There are 60 some odd of this version that has the damper flange on this side so the hammer goes on this side damper goes on this side but there's not dampers all the way up so there's 60 or so of this and 25 or so of this one that is the same thing only it doesn't have the damper side because there's no damper just the side for the hammer and so there again you can see that that wood is just really dingy and ugly and uh, and, and this, this wood is frankly brittle. And so of the 60 or so of this one, 25 or so of this one, maybe, I'm not sure how many, quite a few on, on both were, were broken beyond repair. And, and as I've mentioned in the other videos, there's just nowhere you can get these. You can get, you can get other parts. Parts were more or less standardized by about 1880 in the piano industry, at least the American piano industry, not so much in Europe. But uh, in the United States they were, but Kanabi, apparently didn't get the memo. And so they, they were making these flanges, but now we're stuck. Okay, so so here is, here is CAD, I'm using Fusion 360. And um, so there's the, there's the file. Let's see how it's, Pretty well, pretty well duplicated. Okay. And so basically it was just a matter of taking, taking the calipers and just taking all sorts of measurements, measuring, you know, and all the way down to the thousandth of an inch. So, you know, that width is 280 thousandths and with CAD you can just duplicate that exactly in this, in this uh, inner, uh, the rate, the uh, diameter of the circle there is 193 thousandths and just going on and on and on all the way to the, the depth of, of this little line there. That's where it, where it kind of clicks on to, to a rail, corresponds to a rail to hold it nice and tight, all the way to things like you know, how long these little tines are. That would be about 392 thousandths from from the very top of the tines to the to the end there. So that's uh, and, and just then entering all of those into CAD and then here here we have this is after they've been bushed and the, the spring has been put on and you can see it's like a perfect match. And then the same thing for these, the top. Just a perfect match all the way around. And I'm thinking that these lines here and that line there, I think that's a machining line. But uh, I went ahead and included them in case in case I wasn't right about that. Okay, so there's the other one. There's the the upper. Let's see. So there's the original that I copied it from, and there's the 3D part. Pretty much a precise duplication 
and then uh, this is the piece of trim on that Hallett Davis that was missing that trim. That is this file here. So there again, basically you just take a, uh, let's go this way. I took a photo of the profile of what was there. And then, let's see, I think I have that here maybe. Yeah, there it is. So there's the, the profile, get rid of that. That's the photo of what, of what is there currently. So we still have this piece of trim. And then based on that profile from the photo, and I was able to just trace it and then dimension it like it's supposed to be dimensioned. Let's get that body back. there turn the canvas off and then and then based on just a ton of measurements produce the uh, exact exact replica kind of cool and then finally, uh, finally this one, this is the corner of the Erard. So there's that. Let's see where the canvas is, there it is. So same thing, same thing here. There's the corner of the piano. Let's get rid of these construction planes. This is the corner of the piano, this is the back corner in the shop so took a picture of that and of course that's the part there that's missing and that's a 90 it fits on just like that and then based on those pictures just uh, of course i'm taking those measurements on the actual piano and then dimensioning this to to the exact dimensions based on you know the the height and the width and all of that getting that right get it then then uh let's get rid of that canvas and then based on that you've got a profile and there's the profile right there and then based on the profile basically just extrude that out but at a 90 degree angle at I can't remember what this radius is but uh, it's based on it's based on this I, I I can't remember what that's called, and a uh, and it's it's basically the inner square. One of the if if you if you circumscribe the circle with the square, you get one of the square, and then you got that dimension right there. And there's the piece right there. Pretty cool stuff, and so. So right now I'm learning how to uh, how to paint this in a faux wood. So since obviously plastic is not going to accept um, the same stain that uh, that uh, that the piano will. So so we're going to have to use these use these markers and use some paint to sort of disguise it, make it look make it look like faux wood. And then I guess while we're at it. Um, I wasn't intending to do this because this isn't necessarily piano related, but it's still kind of cool. And I guess if you're watching this video, you're probably the, the kind of shoppy type. I appreciate. So we're putting in a dust collection system. And so if we're on, a, on something like a drill press where it doesn't have a port for dust, it just kind of scatters dust everywhere. You kind of need this, this like gooseneck. So this will be, this is what's in the printer right now is this uh, this piece here this will strap to this is it'll go 90 degrees this will strap to the uh, stand of the drill press and then one side will go to the dust collection the other side will go to this gooseneck so we can just kind of we'll put another I don't know may, maybe get it that long or a little bit longer and then we can just kind of 
put it exactly where we need it, wherever the wherever we're do it, doing the drilling, when the dust collection system's on. And I guess finally to end this video, um, I guess I'll, I'll just say thanks for all your interest in the 3D printing. It's it's kind of been surprising how much uh, um, what the reaction's been. Let's just go check out the 3D printing room, and then we'll end it right there. So here's, uh, here's the 3D printer. If you look down in there, there's the, uh, that, that piece for the drill press that's being printed. You can see the hose, the like vacuum end for the dust collector on the left, and then more, more of those components for that gooseneck system. And then this is, this is, the, this is the system, the, the, it's a resin printer, which is, which is far more precise, more um, detailed. This is the one that, that is used. You can see that it's, it's just like a goopy stuff that's UV sensitive. And so the, the uh, flanges just kind of rise out of the goo super super cool these inventions are absolutely astounding so that's uh 3d printing thanks again for the interest